Hello and thank you for joining us today on our Google Hangout from the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow. My name is Elaine Mulcahy. I'm the PR and Marketing Communications Manager here at the college and I'm delighted to be joined today by Professor Stuart Baird, who is the Dean of our Faculty of Podiatric Medicine, and Christine Skinner, who is the Honorary Clinical Registrar of the Faculty. So 2015 has come and gone, and we're now looking forward to 2016 in the college. Um, Stuart, would you like to start by giving us a bit of an update where the faculty's gone in the last year and where we're heading to in the next year? Thanks, Elaine. Um, just before I start, I just would like to wish everyone a very happy and prosperous 2016 uh, from the Royal College here in Glasgow. Um, it's been a really busy year, um, and I think we've achieved a lot. Uh, through the, the number of different committees that um, are part of the faculty. Before I start, I think there are a number of key events which we really need to consider. Firstly, uh, a new president was installed in the college in December, uh, Professor David Gallery, uh, and David will be in post for three years. Uh, the faculty have developed a strategic plan, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, and we've had a very good growth in faculty membership and fellowship. The faculty is governed uh, by the college governance procedures, but uh, we have an executive board, and we've had a number of changes in the executive board we've over the last year. Uh, Dr. Sarah Curran has joined us as the honorary secretary. Uh, she is uh, head of the School of Podiatry in Cardiff. Uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick has uh, been co-opted onto the, the, the faculty as director of communications, and unfortunately, uh, Dr. Joanne Cardell and Dave Dunning have served their, their time with the faculty and will have to demit office in June of this year. Uh, and I must thank them for the superb uh, amount of work that they've uh, put in over their, their term of office to help the faculty develop and grow. Um, we've held a number of very good education events over the last year. Uh, we had a very successful um, podiatric medical annual symposium, uh, which was run by Dr. John Cargill here in Glasgow, that took place in June. Uh, Robert Ashford put on a pain symposium in Birmingham, which was very well attended, and the lectures were superb and very informative. Uh, Kristen and I attended a, a diabetic food conference in Chennai in India, which I'm sure Kristen will tell us about a little bit later on. Um, Alan Thompson, who is a member of the executive board, uh, runs a journal club. And the journal club has been again really successful. We've had people join internationally uh, from Qatar and various places around the world. So all told, I think we've had a very successful year. Um, Christine has been involved with the development of the first exam uh, in podiatric medicine for the membership level. And again, I'm sure Christine will tell us a little bit about that later on. Over the last year, most the, the most important part is communicating with our members and fellows around the world. And I, this forum using Google Hangout is a fantastic medium which we can communicate on a live basis and then put the, the video recording onto the website. So hopefully this will be part of our, an ongoing uh, method of communication with the faculty membership and fellowship. So that gives you a kind of very brief resume, uh, Elaine, of what the faculty has done over the last years, I know that time is limited. That's, sorry, I'd say that's absolutely great. Thanks for that. Um, and um, I agree with you in terms of the, the, the Google Hangouts, it's a great way to reach people. And um, this is where I've got a, a chance to put you on the spot, <laughs> two of you, because um, we have invited people to give us some questions. And um, I've got some questions which I know you're going to talk a bit about the future of the faculty. And, and the first question is, what is the direction of the faculty? Where is it going? What's on the plan for the year ahead? Well, we've had uh, lots of discussions on the executive board about the, the strategic direction of the faculty. And over the last year, we've developed the faculty strategic plan, which Christine has been involved in. And the strategic plan is a five-year plan for the strategy uh, of, of the faculty. And the, the strategic plan can be divided up into three, into three distinct sections. The first section is education, the second section is exams, and the third section is international development. The education part is chaired by Professor Robert Ashford, 
and he has developed a, a, a very good program of educational events which will take place over the next year. And indeed, he has developed some of some further thoughts which will actually take us right the way through to 2020. Now, we have got our aims and objectives in each of those sections, and we'll measure how we uh, perform at the annual general meeting in June of this year. Christy, do you want to say something a little bit about um, the exam development that you've been involved in? Yes, that would be great. The exams, um, the first exam took place um, last year, but before the exam could take place, we had lots of involvement from members and fellows um, of the faculty contributing to it. And we had a very successful meeting in London where we pulled together the syllabus that we were going to use. People have been very good at contributing excellent exam questions which have gone through the process within the college, which is a very rigorous process. And we've had a successful cohort of candidates go through um, the process. And one of them was an international candidate, which is Good for the, um, the faculty because it means that we're reaching out to people in other countries. And hopefully, we've got another exam coming up in March, and we're looking forward to some more candidates coming forward. And part two of the exam will be held in the autumn. And that is different from the multiple choice questions that we sit in the first part, and it's um, an OSCE exam whereby the candidates will bring a portfolio of their experience, plus be with um, examiners to look at specific areas within the syllabus. So it's been an exciting development and an exciting time for the faculty that we've really got this um, to take place. This has been a, a great amount of work for Christine, and I just publicly want to thank Christine and the, the contributors to the question bank because we started from a blank sheet and in a, in a very short space of time we've got a, a, a very healthy question bank but as Christine has said we always need more questions uh, to feed into it. That's it and it's been a team effort, the whole thing has been a team effort. And one of the, um, the third um, parts of the strategic plan that you mentioned was international work so what's happening there with We've had a, a tremendous um, enthusiasm internationally for membership and fellowship. And I think, well, I don't think I know that we've got um, members and fellows in 18 countries around the world, uh, ranging from New Zealand, Australia, uh, Canada, uh, North America, uh, India, the Middle East, um, Portugal, Greece, uh, and the list goes on. I think the only continent we don't have uh, members and fans is Antarctica. So uh, uh, <laughs> we'll send you, we'll send you to get to recruit them. Uh, but so we have had tremendous interest internationally, and we, the faculty is only three years old, and to have such interest from all around the world uh, affirms really the, 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 the role that the Royal College will play in the global pediatric medical field. So, what is it then? What is it about the faculty? that attracts international people? For me personally, uh, being a fellow of the faculty is really affirmation of professional attainment. And that is one of the, uh, probably the most important reason for me in becoming a fellow of the, the, of the college. Uh, it's opened up a tremendous range of professional activities which I can participate in as dean. And I'm currently a member of College Council. I, I attend the executive board. I'm, I'm a member of the membership committee and the scholarship committee, which are all giving me a tremendous insight into college work, uh, not just of podiatric medicine, but helping to promote podiatric medicine within the wider context of a multidisciplinary college. In addition to that, uh, the college has got a tremendous portfolio of CPD activities, which I have taken part in, uh, well, podiatric medicine. But in addition to that, there are both uh, non-podiatry uh, programs, which we can attend as members and fellows, 
which are clinically based and non-clinically based. And I know that a, a number of our members and fellows have attended the mentorship course here uh, in college, and I found it a tremendous uh, uh, course for them. And in many ways, it's taken them out of their comfort zone, which uh, and really given them a, a very clear insight on how to become a mentor uh, in, a, in, a, in a, a clinical mentor particularly. So there's lots of professional activities within the college that members and fellows can benefit from. But in addition to that, uh, there's some, some other benefits, such as um, discounts in, in uh, Llewellyn, the shirt shop, and uh, Austin Reads, et cetera, et cetera, and, and discounts worldwide in hotels. But for me, it, it's really a, a recognition of professional attainment, which is the main reason why I would encourage uh, colleagues to become members and fellows. And actually, I've seen um, research um, from surveying our own members, uh, and I believe it said 97% of fellows and members of this faculty would actually recommend joining to their colleagues. So there's definitely something in that. Um, so you mentioned that you were a dean, very important, serious job. Um, what, what is your role as a dean? Can, can you talk about that a little bit more, or what it involves? Yeah, the, the, the role of dean is, uh, I think, to coordinate a team. Teamwork is why we've got the faculty to where it is. It's not me as the dean, it's me with others that have helped to develop the faculty over the last three years. And, you know, Christine has her very clear role to play in exams. Robert has his very clear role to play in the development of the educational program. It's a team effort. And if it wasn't for that team, my role as dean would be very much more difficult to achieve. And I'm very lucky that we've got an executive board who are committed to developing the faculty and developing podiatric medicine within the college and within the UK and internationally. So I think that you know, if you break it down, you could say that you know, I represent you know, podiatric medicine on the college council. So I can promote podiatry within the college uh, in its widest context. I am a member, as I said earlier, part of the executive board, part of the scholarship committee, and all of those are really important um, committees within the college. For example, the scholarship committee, it's not really, I don't think, terribly well known in podiatry, but if you're a fellow or a member of the faculty, you can apply to the scholarship committee for travel grants, for example, and we're very fortunate uh, one of our fellows in Australia uh, has quite recently been awarded a substantial travel grant from the scholarship committee, which will help her research uh, on an international and global basis. So it, it gives me the opportunity to, to, to promote podiatric medicine within college and, more importantly, externally to the wider clinical communities. And I guess, as you're saying there about the, the scholarships, it's one of the advantages of being part of a big college like this with you know physicians and surgeons and dental practitioners and travel medicine as well that by coming together you've got more access to, Absolutely. It, to things like this and the support of all well. these other faculties as well um, and sharing good practice I think is um, something that we've benefited from and the college has been really embracing and um, taking pediatric medicine in because it's the only college in the UK that does have a faculty of pediatric yeah. medicine, which is terrific for our profession. Absolutely, and it's recognised and that's significant, so really important and growing importance of pediatric care as well. It is, and I think being part of the faculty is helping shaping the future of the, the, the pediatric medical profession, and that's a tremendous uh, you know, achievement that I think we wish to we're now taking forward. So, imagine I'm a podiatrist. Um, where where do I fit in? Where, why would I join? And at what stage would I be a member or a fellow? How do I know where I fit in in the faculty? No, I think that's a really good question because it's a question that we're asked a lot. You know, where do I fit in? How do I fit into the different tiers of, of, of membership? 
So there are three tiers. The, the, the first tier, and Christy, you, know, you, you can help me if I get anything <laughs> wrong here, but there are three tiers of membership. The first level is the introductory level. And the introductory level is for final year uh, undergraduate students. It's for uh, up to a period of five years postgraduate. And uh, it doesn't uh, uh, give you access to post-nominal uh, letters, but it does give you access to the college and uh, some of the benefits of the college itself. The second tier is the membership level, and this is the level which Christine is particularly responsible for in the exam development. Uh, there are two tiers into the, uh, the, the uh, not two tiers, there's two routes into membership. The one that we would prefer is through the examination system, which I think Christine We'll tell us a little bit about. We're looking for people who are um, qualified for a year and working full time um, in employment, and they can they are then eligible to take the exam. And they will be given guidance and support through that, and we have a mentorship program so that they're not thinking. Oh, how am I going to cope with this exam? So it's quite a, a jump from their undergraduate um, level. But it's, that would be their foundation part. Uh, and then... Correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. when you say it's a jump, it's not a massive jump. It's set no. a year postgraduate, isn't it? Yes. So, so it's, 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 it's a little bit higher than you'd be expected to when you graduate from university. Yes, but it's... Um, a different type of exam, although it's a multiple choice question exam paper, the marking criteria is with the Angoff method, which means that it's a method of marking an exam that probably the candidates are not familiar with. But it's all explained to them. And there is a definitive syllabus that they will follow, and it's divided into three specific areas podiatric medicine pharmacology and diagnostic and ultrasound. Um, and it's things that they have been working with. And another aspect of it is guidance and support uh, through that mechanism. But there is still the other route into membership for those who have been out in the field of podiatric medicine working for five years or more and doing Positive work in the field of podiatry, um, whether working in private practice or working in the health service, and contributing to the development overall of podiatric medicine. So there is still that route for them to come in. Um, and they would apply through the membership committee and you know, give a resume within their CV of why they feel that they could contribute to the further development of faculty mm -hmm. within the college. And I guess for them it's then it's a benchmark that they reach as evidence, you know, once they become a member and they get those letters after their name, it's it's evidence that they have achieved or they've reached a certain standard. Is that That's right. And then what you're looking for are really sort of pioneers of um, and people who are working to excellence in developing the profession because um, it is an exciting time within the development of the mm -hmm. profession, so it's a good journey to go through and to be a member of, you know, the college um, is prestigious. Um, so for their career development, and they can then, um, if you like, it's a flagship of what they've achieved. And I think that you know, that goes back to what maybe I was saying at the beginning. For me personally, it's affirming my profession, professional achievement. And once the, 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 the person has become a member through either the, the, the exam route or the other route, then it does confirm that you know, they've got the, 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 the use of the, the, the letters, the post nominals of uh, membership of the Faculty of Podiatric Medicine, Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow. And that does re really confirm their level within a profession. So it, I think that, you know, that's a, a very attractive way forward. And what's the step up to fellowship then? What's the, the step up to fellowship, Elaine, is where the fellows are really a senior member of the profession and they're, they're, they're making a substantial um, 
significant, substantial contribution to the development of the profession, uh, probably working at a very senior level within the, the, the clinical environment. Or not necessarily the clinical environment, but within the, the podiatric medical profession, uh, with potentially some uh, leadership, uh, clinical leadership, for example, within that. So it's, it's fascinating and it's great to be at work here for six years. So I was here when the faculty was created and it's been fantastic to see how far and how fast it's moved in the last few years. And I look forward to catching up again soon. It's unfortunately ran out of time today. Thank you both so much. For just, the just, just before we finish, Elaine, there's one thing which we maybe we should have said, and that was a little bit about some of the work we've done internationally. And maybe a, a, a little suggestion could be that one of another group will hang out that we maybe do in the future could be centered around some, maybe some of the international diabetic group work that the faculty has been involved with. And it might make an interesting discussion. I don't know what you think. Sounds like, sounds like a fantastic idea. So let's follow that up as, as soon as we're done here today. And get um, it'd be good to share experiences of international work in diabetic foot disease as opposed to the facilities that we're so used to in the UK Absolutely. with working with these challenging conditions. Absolutely. Loads going on. So thank you both so much for joining me today. And thank you. thanks to anyone watching as well. Thanks so much for joining. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.